In this video, I'll show you how you can run and debug Python programs in Visual Studio Code. And if you want to master Python in a complete detailed manner, then I'm planning to create a course on Python. So what you can do is you can just subscribe to our channel so that once I publish the course, you'll get the notification. So without wasting much time, let's get started. Okay, the very first step is that you should be having Visual Studio Code in your computer. For that, go to code.visualstudio.com and in case you have Windows, then you can download the installer file from here or click on this drop down and you can download for Mac if you are a Mac user or you can download for Linux. Now in my case, I already have this VS Code and I'll just tell you that during installation, you'll be getting four checkboxes. I'll recommend you to check all these four checkboxes. Now once it is done, the next step for you is to download Python. Now for that, what you can do is you can just go to python.org slash downloads. Now before that, what you have to do is you have to just check whether Python is present in your computer. For that, you can just give Python version. And if you do not have Python, then you will be getting a message. Here it says Python 3.9.7. That means I install in my computer. If I do not have Python, then I'll be getting a message something like Python command is not found. All right, so this is how you have to confirm whether Python is present or not. Now, what I've done is I have just created a folder. The name is for Python and I've created a file as well. So just give right click and you have this option open with code. Just click on this so that this particular folder will be opening in my Visual Studio code. Now, what I'll do is first, I'll just click on this so this is the way to create a new file. I'll just click on this and I'll just say, for example, let's say that one.py. This is the name of the file. I mean Python file. So .py is the extension of Python. You can keep any other name, for example, sample.py or test.py and so on. So it all depends on you. Now, what I have to do is first, I'll just go to terminal, click on new terminal. And you see that before that, I'm getting a pop-up at the bottom. It says, do you want to install the recommendation extensions for Python? So that means Visual Studio Code is suggesting you to install an extension for Python. So just click on this install or you can just click on show recommendations so that it will show you which particular extension you can install. Now you see that here it shows that Python and this particular Python extension is maintained by Microsoft and Microsoft puts a lot of effort in maintaining this particular extension. So just click on this install button and you see that there are a lot of good ratings and so many millions and millions of people have installed this particular extension. So this is a very good extension for Python and it will be a connection for you to run Python program in VS Code using this particular extension. This extension is installed and now what I have to do is now First thing is that whenever you install an extension, I always suggest you to reload your VS Code. So for that, I'll just give Shift Control P to open the command palette and I'll just click on this developer reload window. In case if you do not get this option, you can just search for developer reload or you can simply search for reload. And I'll just show you, it should be having that particular option. So I'll just check again why it did not come up. So I'll just search for here reload and you see that I have developer reload window. Since I have already selected this particular option previously while working, that is the reason this option is showing at start. In case if you're not using this option, then you have to search it in this command palette. Now just click on this reload window so that your VS code is automatically refreshed. Now. You see that I have all the list of extensions which are added and first I'll just click on this particular icon and now let me just click on this close button for get started and I have this one dot py. Now just to show you I'll just add a simple print command. So I'll just give print and it is a simple hello world program for python. I'll just give control s to save it and 
what you can do is at this moment you see here it says it says formatter auto pip 8 is not installed so you see that this vs code is so much helpful automatically it gives you a lot of options to install a lot of tools or plugins or you can call it as extensions so i'll just click on this yes and at the background it is installing that particular formatter tool as well now you see we have problems output debug console and then terminal so this is the terminal wherein you can give the user input and you can see the output as well now you see that this particular command is getting run that is pip installed now you see that it is giving a warning which you can ignore at this moment now if you want to execute this particular file you see that i can just give python and then the name of the file that is one dot py and you see i'm getting hello world printed at the console or in the terminal or alternatively what you can do is you can come here and just give right click and you see that you have run python file in terminal click on this and now you see this particular program is run in the terminal now another way is that what i would suggest is just go to extensions and there is a very good extension called as code runner just install this extension click on install button wait for some time until this particular extension is installed so it will give an option at the top right to run the python program from vs code itself that is you don't have to come to the terminal or you don't have to do right click so now you see that this particular extension is installed i'll just go to command palette again and i'll just give reload window to refresh or to restart my vs code now you see i have the same program here and first i'll just click on this so that i don't see this particular installed extensions so here you see at the top you have run code, run python file or debug python file. So I just want to run this particular program. So either I can click on run code. So if I just click on this run code, now you see that in the terminal, this particular code will run. And you see it says python and then one dot py and it says hello world. Or what you can do is you can just come here and say run python file, which is better option as per me. So if I just say run python file, it will run this particular program, right? Now there might be some problems in case you're accepting user input. So for that, let's say that if you have a program where you have to input the details to your terminal as a user, and once the program will accept the input from you, it is going to process the result. So in that case, sometimes there might be a problem and you'll not be able to input the details from your terminal rather your result will be coming in output to fix that what you can do is go to files you have preferences go to settings i'll just go to extensions let me just come down and if i just come down i should be having run code configuration just click on this and if i just come down you see i have an option that is run in terminal and make sure it is always checked so you see if it is unchecked like this you have to just check it so at this moment it was already checked so no need to do anything just close this settings and i have another program so in the folder that is for this folder that is for python i had already created a program just to save time with the name app.py and you see what i'm gonna do is let me just open my vs code and this is the program you see that if I just run it, let me just run it from this particular option and I'll just show you the output. And you see here it says that inconsistent use of tabs and spaces in indentation. Okay, let me just check it. I think there is some problem. Yeah, you see that this is not indented properly. So this is very important in Python that you have to indent the code in a very proper way. Now, let me just save it and I think I have to select this as well now you see that my code is formatted once i save it and if i just run it now you see the output welcome to the scores tom tain and hello my first name is sandy and my last name is tutorial brain okay so actually i have just written this code just to show you an example so what i basically want to show you is how to debug the python program so you see that this side you have this option that is run and debug 
So what we'll do is first, you see here we have app.py which is open and you see we have run and debug. If I just click on this run and debug, you have run and debug. So if you want to debug your code for checking any errors or if you want to test your program, then it is better to go for run and debug so that you can debug your program. Just click on this run and debug and it will ask to choose a file. In this case, since we are dealing with Python, I'm going to choose Python file. In fact, you can choose these options as well. But this is the simplest option, which is debug the current active Python file because I'm going to debug this particular file. Click on this and it will open a JSON file as well. So internally, it is actually saving all the details in a JSON file. You see here, you can launch this particular JSON file as well. So it says create a launch.json file, which I don't want to do at this moment. And it is asking to have a configuration. So let me do one thing. I think there is some problem. Again, let me do again run and debug. And I'll just wait for some time. And you see here it says no configuration. Now before that, what I'll do is first we have to set the breakpoint. So you see here this is a program for me. And what I'll do is let's say that I can add some breakpoints. So breakpoints are important in case if you want to stop the execution at a particular instant and you want to check the value or rather you want to test the value and based on that particular value if you want to proceed further then you can just set the breakpoint so let me just do one thing i can just set a breakpoint here i can set a breakpoint here i'll just show you how it works so here also i can set and here also i'll set so basically i'm just showing you how you can easily debug a python program now you can just click on this run and debug or you see that if this is not working, you can just go to run and you have start debugging and the shortcut is F5. Click on this F5 and just wait for some time. It will ask you to choose a configuration. What I'll do is I'll just select this particular configuration. It says Python current file is already running. Let me just close this. First, I'll just select a configuration from here and you can select a configuration. Okay, so I'll just say like add a configuration and actually let me just select from here if it is not opening. Now I'll just select this python file okay and you see that this is the particular json file which I was talking about and I'll just close at this moment it is not required I'll just go to my app.py and first you see that I have four options here you see here this is continue or continue then we have a step over, we have a step into, step out and then we have restart and stop. So restart and stop is normal. For example, if you want to restart the debugging again, then you can click on this restart. And if you want to stop the debugging, then you have to click on this stop. I'll just talk about mostly these four. And also at the bottom, you see whatever breakpoint you have set, you will see here at the bottom, you see we have set four breakpoint, right? So these are four breakpoints and you can see these are four breakpoints at the bottom. Now, let's say that if I just give continue. So what happens is in case of continue, it will just continue until the next breakpoint is found. So if I just come here, you see, if I just give continue. Now the cursor is here. And if I just give continue again, you see here we have locals and we have special variables. You can check all the special variables here or if you have class variables you can check under class variables again if i just give continue now you see it has come to this particular place that is print x comma y and at this moment if i just close this first you see here i'm having the value of x as tom and y is 10. so you see that you can see the values here itself and in case of watch, you see, you can put a particular variable and you can have a watch here. For example, I can just say here, you see, I can just add an expression. For example, I can just say X and you see, I can get the value of X here and it says X is 10. You can also select this and what you can do is you can just evaluate in debug mode or you can add to watch and you see this is added to watch. So Y is also 10. So you can get the value here under variables and you can watch here as well. So it's not that you can only add variables, you can watch any expression. And now I'll just talk about step over. 
So suppose you have a function, then it will just step over the function and after that, even if you have breakpoint or not, it is going to run from after the function. Then we have a step into, so if you have a function, then it will call the function and once it is going to call the function, automatically it will go to the first line into that particular function. That is the reason the name is step into. And then we have a step out. So step out means once it tries to process the function, it will not show you that what exactly it has done inside the function. So it will just process the function and comes out and then it will go to the next breakpoint. Alright. So these four options are there. I'll just show you. First, let me just click on this step over. And now you see that it has directly come here. And I have my function. So in case of step over, you see that here I do not have a breakpoint. So if I just click on this step over, automatically it has come and it has printed the output. Now what I'll do is first I'll just select a particular breakpoint here. Now you see here I have selected, I have added this particular breakpoint and if I just run this, start debugging and now I have a step over. You see it has come here again. If I just come here, you see it is in print function. Now it has come here. If I just click on this step over, now you see it has come here because this particular breakpoint is defined. So in this way, you can have step over in the same way you can just give a step into wherein it will directly go into the function and it will process one by one. And in case of step out, what it is going to do is it will just process the function as a black box and it will just come out to the next breakpoint outside the function. So that's all I just wanted to show you. And you can also see the values. For example, if I just hover over these names, you see here I have F name and currently the value is Sandy. And for L name, you see the value is tutorial brain. So you can check the values here or you can hover here and you can check the values. Now debugging is a very different and very vast topic. So I cannot cover in one simple lecture. So if you want to understand Python debugging, then I have another video which you will see here in the I button either here or here somewhere. So just go to that particular video and you will understand in a very clear picture how Python debugging works. So that's all in this video. If the video was helpful to you, hit on the like button, subscribe to our channel. You see that you'll be having a subscribe button here, 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 somewhere. Just click on this so that you get all the updates from Tutorial Brain. And I will be creating a complete tutorial on Python. And if you want to access that particular tutorial for free, then you can just subscribe the channel so that you will be updated. Also, I'm having the premium courses. And the premium courses will be almost like 10 to 15 hours of course or it can be even more because I regularly add content in that particular video. So once that video is out in our website, you can access that website also. So basically I'll be having two courses. One is the Python free course and anyone interested to learn Python from start to end in a very basic manner step by step, then you can access that free course. And if you want to master Python in a detailed manner, or if you want to go one step further, then I have a paid course for you and you can access that paid course after you have taken my free course because in the free course, I'll be giving a coupon to you and only the first thousand students who are active, who will use the coupon code in correct time will be able to access that premium course for free. So just check the description of that particular video in case if you want coupon code. So that's it in this video. Take care. I'll see you in the next video. Till I get up, time is barely on our side